Hi and welcome to Programming Percy and today we will be talking about the Open Graph Protocol. So we will be talking about how and why you should use it on your website to make your website a lot better. So I hadn't thought about it before. How does Twitter, Facebook and other social media know how to display my website when I share it in a post? I never considered that before. But then I began rebuilding my own website using SvelteKit. And when I was done, I was super psyched that I was going to share my site on Twitter. So imagine my disappointment when I copied the link inside my tweet and the tweet preview looked a little bit boring. So kind of like this. Now I restarted searching why and I learned about the Open Graph Protocol. The Open Graph Protocol is a standardized way of representing data on your website inside other websites. Consider it as a business card for your website or even web page, so you can have different previews for different pages on your site. So after applying the protocol to my website, my tweet instead looks a lot more intriguing and people will probably be a lot more interested in my site when it looks like this. So the protocol is actually really easy to implement. There are many different tags to learn, but to get started, you only need to new, know four of them. The protocol relies on the meta tags inside your web pages head, which other websites can read and understand to know how to preview. So let's talk a little bit about open graph meta tags. Open graph meta tags are a set of meta tags that can be added to the head of an HTML document to provide additional information about how the content of that page looks. This information can then be used by social media platforms or other websites to provide a richer preview of that page whenever it is shared, such as a title, description, an image, a video, or other details. So to begin by so to begin adding open graph meta tags to your HTML document, you can use the meta element with the property attribute. So you set the property equals to OG, which is short for open graph. And then you set the content type to whatever you want to display. This meta tag we see uses the OG title property to specify the title of the web page. And it uses the content attribute to provide the value for that property. And you can add as many open graph meta tags as you want to your HTML document. And it will use the latest uh, tag that it finds. So you can have duplicates. There's no, not much reason for having duplicates, but just so you know, it will select the latest one. So here's a list of the most commonly used open graph properties. We have the open graph title, which is the title of the page. This should be really brief and a descriptive title that summarizes the whole content. We have the open graph description, which is a brief description of the whole page. It should be a few sentences and provide much more detail about the content of your page. We have OG image, which of course is the image to represent the whole page. And you have the URL, which is the URL linking to that page. Pretty self-explanatory. So to understand which tag relates to what, let's have a look at my improved tweet. And we can see the OG image is of course the image and the OG description, as you can see, has more room, so it can be a little bit longer. And the OG title, which is short, the OG URL is displayed under the image and is here. In addition to these properties, there are many other open graph properties that you can use to specify additional information about your page, such as the type of the page, is it an article, for instance, or the author of the page, or published, day, the date it was published, for instance. So you can find a complete list if you visit the Open Graph Protocols website. As you can see, they also showcase the first four that we have been discussing, and there's a lot more meta tags, and you can do a lot of things with this, but 
the, the first four ones are the most important to have so you can have this really nice preview whenever somebody shares your link. So for instance, we can take a look at the open graph meta tags on my website when I'm done. And they look like this. And you can view them by uh, opening the developer tool by either right clicking and select inspect on a website or you can uh, press F12 to bring up the developer tools. I have uh, pretty many of them. And actually the most important one I want you to see is that Notice how some of them are OG, which is Open Graph, but some of them are Twitter. So Twitter, for instance, has their own meta tags, which are specific for their website and how they will handle the meta tags. This is something to take into consideration. So different social media has something called alternate, alternate tags. They have their own tags. Um, I think most of them will default to the OG tag if there is no other tag. Um, but for instance, for Twitter, if you want to image your image to fill the whole tweet as it does in my page, instead of just being a small image in the corner, you have to specify the tweet Twitter card tag and say that it's supposed to be summary large image, as we can see I've done inside of my meta tag. So to find out more about which meta tags are available for Twitter, etc., you can visit developer.twitter.com. It will show you all the available tags that they have and a little explanation about them. The same thing goes for Facebook and others. And you can find links inside the Open Graph protocol at the bottom. They have links for related, um, all the related sources and for instance from Facebook, for Google, so it might be good to take a little look at how they do it for each specific media. Now, once you start using these meta tags, you will want to debug them. And it's actually pretty easy. So there's a bunch of tools out there which helps you. You can enter your URL and they will show you the preview that exists for your website. Twitter, Twitter has one, for instance. As you can see here, we can enter our URL and we can select preview. And it will tell us uh, that it found 16 meta tags and that it found the specific Twitter card and that the card loaded successfully. It will tell us that it cannot render the card because they stopped doing that for whatever reason. Um, but it's good to know if there's any errors in your tag, it will tell you. And the same thing goes for Facebook. They, will, they also have their own debugger tool. I will link this in the description. So whenever uh, I'm gonna try how it looks on Facebook, for instance, I can go here, sharing debugger, I enter my URL, I press the debug, and it will take a little, uh, a few seconds, and then I will see all the data. You can see here, it scraped my website 51 minutes ago. You can see my URL, we can see a little, uh, a few tags that was redirected, and we can see how it looks when somebody, um, puts a link to my website on Facebook. This is how it looks. And we can also see the meta tags that was used and how it found them. So meta tags are really easy to use, but they give so much value to your website. When e whenever somebody shares a link to your website, it will look so much nicer. So if you haven't already used Open Graph, you should really implement it right away. I do recommend you to visit the Open Graph website to read what options are there and really to see what you can do with it. We only showcased the most basic stuff here. Um, you can add a preview video, etc. At least me, I'm not a front-end developer first. I'm new to the whole front-end realm and I was really amazed by this and how easy it was to implement and I didn't, I didn't really know anything about Open Graph until uh, this rebuild. This is a short one today. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to reach out to me in any of my social media or put a comment here. Let me know if there's anything you need help with. And if you like this video, you can like and subscribe and feel free to view my other videos.